This video is going to show you how to perform a hypothesis test on a single population variance. Consider this scenario. Oven temperatures should have a standard deviation no larger than 2 degrees. You suspect that your oven may not be heating properly, so you preheat your oven to 350 degrees 10 times and record the actual temperature. You find that the sample mean is 349.8 degrees with a sample standard deviation of 2.8 degrees. Assume that oven temperatures are normally distributed. Ultimately, we want to know, is the standard deviation of the temperatures of your oven too large at the 5% level of significance? Here's an important note about this problem. We don't actually care about the population mean. We're not concerned if 349.8 differs significantly from 350 degrees. We're concerned about the consistency of the oven. We want to make sure that whenever we heat that oven, that the spread or the standard deviation of these oven temperatures isn't differing from 350 degrees by too much. The standard deviation of these temperatures, whenever the oven is preheated, should be no larger than 2 degrees. Now the problem that we have here is that the variance, or the standard deviation, is not normally distributed. So again, we need a different type of test in order to handle this situation. That test is going to be the chi-squared test for a population variance. The chi-squared test for a population variance is used for performing inference on an unknown population variance. Notice that this differs from all of the other tests that we've done so far, and that before, we were concerned about testing a population mean. We've moved on to a different parameter now. The parameter we're interested in is the variance. So the chi-squared test for a population variance is only concerned about testing the variance. There is one condition that we need. We need to make sure that the original population is normally distributed. If this condition checks out, we can go ahead and run the test. The test statistic follows a chi-squared distribution. It's denoted by x squared, and it's equal to n minus 1, the sample size minus 1, times s squared, the sample variance, divided by the hypothesized population variance, sigma squared. This test statistic, like the t-test, also has n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Based on the context of the problem, we already know that oven temperatures are normally distributed, so the only condition that we need checks out. We're good to go ahead and start the test. Before we do that, let's write down a summary of everything that we know. We know that the sample standard deviation was 2.8, and we know that the sample size was 10. One really important thing about this test to realize is that we're working with the variance. The problem told us that the oven temperature should have a population standard deviation no larger than 2 degrees. However, this is a chi-squared test for a population variance, and what that means is that everything should be in terms of the population variance. So, our hypothesized population variance, sigma squared, should be 2 squared, which is 4, and we're doing this test at the 5% level of significance. Since everything should be in terms of the population variance, that also means that our null hypothesis is going to be sigma squared equal to 4, since we're looking to see if the standard deviation of the oven temperatures is too large, we want to test in the alternative if the population variance is greater than 4. At this point, we calculate the test statistic. The test statistic for this test follows a chi-squared distribution, which is denoted by x squared. We calculate it by taking the sample size minus 1, multiplying by the sample variance, and dividing by the hypothesized population variance. This gives us 10 minus 1 times 2.8 squared. Keep in mind the sample standard deviation was 2.8, so the sample variance is going to be 2.8 squared, divided by 4. Working this out gives us a test statistic of 17.64. We can also calculate the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are given by n minus 1, we had a sample size of 10, 10 minus 1 gives us 9 degrees of freedom. We have the test statistic, so now we can calculate the p-value. 
This is an upper one-sided test because we have the greater than sign in the alternative hypothesis. As a result, the p-value is going to be the area above 17.64 in the chi-squared distribution. Once again, since we're using the chi-squared distribution table, we can't actually come up with an exact p-value directly from the table. So what I'll just tell you is that using Excel, we can calculate the exact p-value of 0 0.0396. We'll go into greater detail about how you can get this exact p-value in class. We have the p-value so we can make our decision and come to a conclusion. We're going to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value of 0 0.0395 is less than our level of significance of 0.05. As a result, there is enough evidence to conclude that the variance of the oven temperatures is significantly greater than 4. What this also means is that the standard deviation of the temperatures of your oven is too large. It's larger than the recommended value of 2 degrees. But since this is a chi-squared test for a population variance, our conclusion should be in terms of the variance. To finish things off, let's fill in another cell in our table. For this test, we were working with a single population, and the parameter of interest was the variance. So we'll place the chi-squared test for a population variance in the row with one population, and in the column where the parameter of interest is the variance. 